afternoon, everyone. Um, I have a slightly different talk uh, than what we've seen most of the day. There's not going to be any code. There's not going to be, well, there's going to be a few schematics, but not many. And, uh, and there's going to be lots of pictures of home built devices, mostly. Um, most of these talks, we go into what we can do with the software, you know, and we look at it from the technical point of view. You know, we can do lots of awesome things with an IoT server. We can do lots of awesome things with an ESB. We can, lots of, we can do lots of awesome things. But why, why do you want to do those things, right? So my first slide is already a nice mess. I'll try to explain what this is. Um, there was supposed to be another picture, but uh, I was very late with my slides, unfortunately. These are mostly devices that a friend of mine came up with, Rolf Hutt. I'll refer to him later. He likes to make stuff, but he does not like to program stuff. Either that or he's just very bad at it. So anytime he makes something, he comes to me and says, hey, I have data, I'm recording things, what to do with it? Um, the left top, actually, that's an IKEA picture frame. On top of it is a little element called a piezo element. Uh, you find it in all those birthday cards that start singing to you when you open them. Horrible things. You pull it out. What it does, actually, if you hit it, if it uh, changes form, it sends out a signal and did it around. So if you send a signal to it, electricity, it will make a sound. You stick it on the bottom of a picture frame, put some wire on it, you have a rain gauge. Drops fall on it, you can measure rain. This is the cheapest rain gauge there is. It'll set you back about 50 pence. You can put them anywhere. Internet of Things, right? Everything, everywhere. Obviously, this is a prototype, and this is used to show people how easy you can make it. You know, we take it to schools, to businesses. Eight-year-old kids can make that thing, hook it up to a computer, and actually measure something. The one below is a prototype that you can actually put outside and won't, you know, rust. Uh, they were originally designed for Africa because uh, they don't have them there. They really don't. Um, so in this case, the need, there's an actual use case here. Farmers in Africa can't um, insure their crops like Dutch farmers can. Dutch farmers complain about the rain because all the potatoes are ruined. They'll get money and they'll have a next harvest next year. African farmers don't, because the insurance companies have no clue what the weather in Africa actually does. So they want to put those everywhere. Turns out, even in Holland, we don't know, we don't have very detailed information about this. The KNME, the Dutch Weather Service, now wants 1,500 of those, so that they actually know what's going on. Because these are cheap, they're connected, and they, you can put them everywhere. The whole purpose of IoT. Now, as you might see as, as from all of these things, Rolf, my friend, does a lot with water-related science. This is something I like to fish. This is a pair of waders. Now, there's lots of fishermen out there. They go out into the water with waders. If you put a little temperature sensor in there, you can tell the temperature of the water, of course. But that is not interesting. What is interesting in this case, if you walk along the stream, the temperature changes in the water tell you a lot about, um, in this case, seepage from um, groundwater. Where does groundwater actually enter a stream, for example? You know, people used to think, and most of us probably think, that it just comes up through the ground and wherever. Apparently, this is very localized. You can find it just with a pair of waders. You equip waders for fishermen with a very simple and cheap device, and you have information. It comes from anywhere. And this one is our favorite. This one actually made the news on the BBC. This is a Winnie the Pooh umbrella <laughs> with another one of those elements, a Bluetooth headset that we connected it to, an iPhone app and a Mac app. Does basically the same thing as that. Anybody who walks around with this umbrella has a rain gauge. Everybody who walks around with their umbrella is collecting data. And I guess that's what it is. That's the Internet of Things, right? You can collect data everywhere. And in the most uh, surprising ways, ways that we don't think of. 
Now, according to Gardner, and these are just the standard things, right? This, this is all the big misses, the Fitbit, the phones. Six and a half billion devices will be connected by 2020. It's an estimate, could be more, could be less. I mean, I've seen smart fridges already. Um, but the real question is not what we know, what we don't know, because there's not a lot that we don't know. I mean, if you see all the devices, everybody here has a cell phone. And all the stuff that's registered already, I used to be an app developer, I have a slight, I have a little bit of an idea. <laughs> what is registered, it is a lot. Another example, I drove by Amsterdam a while back in a train. Apparently a crime was committed. A week later, I get a text message from the police. You were in the area of this crime, did you see anything? So there's a lot of data being collected. Now, obviously home automation is taking flight too. Again, a lot of data. But the home automation, for some reason, is looked at the other way. How, we can con how can we control our home? So there's, there's these wall plugs. They are controlled. You can control them from your phone to turn something on or off. You can make these yourself, by the way, with a little device. I have one here. Uh, I hope to leave this room without this, but that's for later. Um, but you can control whatever you plug into this. Uh, this is a tone. It's like a Dutch version of the Nest. And, uh, and it's only a, a, li a little plug because uh, we worked on it. But this all, these are all devices that help you control things in your house, from the temperature, the heat, the lighting, the curtains that are supposed to close at a certain time, whatever. We can control these things. But obviously, every time we do that, that's also interesting data. When do I turn off the light? When do I turn off the heat? Right? Because this is all about pushing buttons and making things happen. You know, these are actuators. They make stuff happen. The other things we saw were sensors. You know, what is going on around us? But all of that is interesting data. This is another example. And you see more and more, just like the first slide. Do it yourself. These are two little lamps connected with uh, a particle photon. I got one right here to the internet. This takes no programming, no soldering whatsoever. What this does, through IFTTT, so this is something you can try at home. Your kids, your eight-year-old kid can try this at home. Through IFTTT, if weather.com says it's gonna be colder than 18 degrees, the light over there atop the coats will flash. And if it predicts rain, the light over here, where the umbrellas are hanging, will flash. It's very simple, no code, no soldering, whatever. You can turn it around, a little RFID chip will tell you the light was on, but did anybody actually take the umbrella? Did they? Or did they look out the window, you know? So there's, even in this, there's a lot of information, not just about the weather, but how people respond to it. And that's what people forget. You know, it's not just about controlling what you're doing, but you can, basically, you're monitoring behavior, and you can do that in your own house. Now, there's a lot of data. There's weather data, lights, turning lights on and off, turning your temp temperature on and off. When do you do it? Do you set automated things? You know, like most of us still have the simple thermostat that basically says, if it's uh, cold, you know, keep the temperature at this level. But if we say keep the temperature at this level, it tells us something else. It tells us that apparently we don't like it when it gets a lot colder than that. And funnily enough, because I always thought that was sort of, you know, in, in, uh, in Celsius, degrees Celsius, I grew up thinking that number was around 18. Apparently my girlfriend and my mother don't agree. Now that is around 21. So that tells me something about my girlfriend, right? So it's, it's all information. When do you leave the house? You know, there's, there's doors now that if I come up to the door and I have this RFID chip in my pocket, the door will open for me. I don't have to open the door, which is very convenient if I'm carrying groceries. But if I know when the door opens and closes when I leave the house, and I know when it rains, and when I actually took my coat off the rack, suddenly I know a lot about my behavior, right? Suddenly I know a lot about my behavior. Now this. This is a very interesting example. This is, a, this is the particle photon I was talking about. 
this connects to Wi-Fi almost automatically. You hook it up, you power it up, your phone will see a Wi-Fi signal, you can set it up, you just log in, all you need to make is an account, and it can start sending data to the internet. This is a version that does the same thing, but over uh, 3 or 4G, so with a, you know, with a SIM card like your phone. This is an industrial version, this is the same chip. This, all this around here is just for people like you and me who want to play around. Like with the Arduinos, like with the Raspberry Pis, like with the, I forgot the chipset that uh, my, the earlier speaker mentioned, all of those. That is an industrial version. So what you see happening now, and this is a very interesting example because these people did the same thing that I'm talking about in the house, but for an aquarium. They took this, they connect all the devices. If you have a tropical aquarium, you want to monitor the temperature, you want to monitor water quality, um, oxygen, all those, there's lots of things you want to monitor. And you want to control some of the, pe the, the, the machines that you have in there to change the temperature, to maybe make your filter run faster, to clean more water. So it's basically, it's sort of like, well, it's a small home. It's the home of a fish or a bunch of fishes. So it's basically the same idea. They started out with this, a simple plug where you plug in devices and some programming and you control you get the data and you control your aquarium and it can control itself. You connect an app on your phone, you can monitor that, you get analytics. You know, average temperature in your aquarium, what's going on in my aquarium. It's the same thing, smaller, but more interestingly, they went from this device to play around with to this device and have it produced. Now they're funded and they're selling it. So from what something that we make at home to play around with, it goes to something you can actually sell. Interestingly enough, just to go back a few pictures, this umbrella, obviously not so cute, no Winnie the Pooh on it. A couple months ago, we saw it pop up on Kickstarter. I have an umbrella that warns you about the weather and uh, you know, we were like, wait a minute, we made that two years ago. So. A lot of stuff happens in the home. And uh, I guess my biggest thing is there's a lot of stuff going on around us that makes these things interesting, that makes inter IoT interesting. It's not the IoT server that makes IoT interesting. It's these things that make it interesting. Without these things, IoT server is just a piece of software. Now, Rolf kept asking me, collect data for me. Tell me, like once I have the data, then he, he can analyze, you know, he, he's a scientist, but he doesn't know software. So I stole this picture, I have to admit, and I took out some pieces, so you might have already seen this. But basically what we started with, okay, we need to collect data, we need to send it somewhere. Well, we can use a, an ESB or at least parts of it. We don't need all of it, but parts of it. Now, unfortunately, fortunately, like Sanjeeva told us earlier, it's all just carbon with features added on. So if you add features, you can also leave features, right? Now, so we get data, we aggregate data, store it somewhere, and suddenly we have a lot of information. Now we can analyze it, right? We can make all kinds of dashboards about the temperature, about what we did. But more importantly, these devices can also be controlled. Now there, we have a machine learner, we have complex event processing, we have software, we have features that we can plug into that carbon core that can control these devices as well. So why, if I feel chilly, do I still have to walk over to the wall, turn the thermostat or push a button or whatever and say, hey, it's getting too cold in here. If this device, after days, weeks, months, you know, can, do that for me. He can figure it out. And then maybe sometimes he's wrong, I'll tell him. He can learn. So basically what I did, I hooked up a few of these in our office at Genlo. These are the same devices that we saw earlier, particle photons, with a pre-made weather station. Um, uh, out of the box, it measures temperature, humidity, uh, barometric pressure, and a estimated temperature based on the barometric pressure. So we have a, well, we had two in the office, now we have one. 
because one's right here. Um, send it to the ESB, start collecting data, and start doing interesting things with it. Now, the whole $50 thing, you know, sort of the punchline from my, uh, um, from my title, it didn't happen. It didn't happen because uh, I was counting on another one of these cool projects to come through. Uh, unfortunately, their production was delayed by a month. I got an email yesterday that my two units were shipped. So they're on their way. It's a little late. Maybe next time I can show them. So instead, I used a little Amazon instance that sort of resembled the same specifications. But you know, if you dress down your, your tools, if you only take what you need, you don't need that much. You know, just a few gigabytes of RAM and a small device, and anybody can go at, get at it. And as they keep saying, it's all open source. You know, and obviously, if you want to roll out something like this for every house, product support could be interesting. But if you just want to make something fun for in your house or experiment, it's right there for you. Surprisingly enough, while I was thinking of that little stack that I showed you earlier, Ruben man I work for, said, I heard someone talking about IoT server. And most of the elements that I want are covered in here. So I went to try the IoT server. Surprisingly enough, I didn't like it at all. This, oh, I said it out loud. No, I didn't like it because it's not meant for the small scale stuff. As he said, you, you, you make these device profiles. So if I have a lot of devices, if I want to put these in every house, right, if I'm going to sell this and I'm going to sell a service with it to all the people in Holland, I make five million, then I want to create one device profile and everybody can connect their little device. You know, you put the agent on here to the IoT server. If I have two devices, I, I really don't want to write, a you know. So, this has a lot of interesting features for when you're trying something bigger. Same with the Fishbit people. They made a prototype, they just sent their data somewhere and had an app that showed it. Now, they're gonna have, hopefully, hopefully, you know, that's what they hope, a lot of people putting it in their aquariums. And then suddenly, suddenly this becomes interesting. Suddenly the part where you can very easily connect your devices, as long as they're, you know, predefined devices becomes very interesting, and that part becomes very powerful. Now this is what I was waiting for and hoping for. And this is Pine64, it's a small bit computer. You can run it all, or at least <laughs> I'm convinced you can run all of that on here. This will set you back, the version I ordered sets you back 39, no, $29 a piece, and that's including Wi-Fi connectivity. And all you need to add is little SD card. So including an SD card, $40, $45, you have a computer that will run all of that. And that's basically how you can automate your own home if you feel like it. Now, I brought one. Because I have a little bit of a challenge. Unfortunately, uh, I can't afford to give all of you one. I, I looked at Ruben, I tried Puppy Eyes, but I suck at puppy eyes. So I only have one. It's in a little box. It has the weather thing as well. And it has my business card. So now the challenge is, I'm going to give this to someone. And I want you to do something really cool with it. And then let me know. Right? So the only thing is, but maybe Ruben has an idea. How do I pick who to give this to? Right? Oh, Ruben, Ruben always has good ideas. So maybe he has an idea now. Maybe you can start by saying, who does not want to have this? <laughs> Process of elimination. That didn't work. OK. <laughs> Lottery tickets is a bit hard. No, this is not the Pine 64. This is the, yeah, that would be fun. No, those are still on the way. They're a little bit late. This is a particle photon with a weather shield on it. All you need is a micro USB cable, hook it up to the internet and it'll start doing things. You can program it just like an Arduino or not. You can control them with IFTTT, whatever way you want. I had an idea, but I completely forgot. 
on how to give this away. Anyway, this is, we'll keep that for later. Maybe someone thinks of something, and then after the session you can come to me, and if I like your idea, I'll give this to you. Um, but this is basically it. There's a lot of things <coughs> that we can use this IoT server for. There's a lot of things that IoT can do for us. And I guess this is not about techni technical stuff, this is not about code, but it's about using your creativity to see all the fun stuff and all the interesting things that we can do with the Internet of Things, right? Because, yeah, the whole world is connected. And all we do right now is uh, measure how fast we run our laps and things like that. And obviously we can do a lot more interesting stuff with that. That is it. I hope you got some interesting ideas from this or that you can do something interesting at home. Are there any questions left? Because I know there's drinks waiting and the party is about to start, so I don't want to keep you too long. Any questions, any remarks? Well, I guess if <laughs> that makes it easy. We're on the second floor. But first of all, I want to invite you. Seek me out at the party. If you have a cool idea, this is yours. And I want to hear all about it. Thank you for your time.